Good morning. Look at that. <laughs> um, I've often heard that it is best to start these types of talks with a joke, to make you people feel comfortable and relaxed. And so I have no such plans. <laughs> what I do have, though, is a clip from a live recording I made on the 20th of October, 2020. Please, viewer discretion is advised. See somebody else. Everybody, look at this. These are the bullets that were falling. That were falling by our, our side. That were were dodging bullets. My name is Obianu Drew Catherine Ude. Don't worry, you can call me DJ Switch. <laughs> I'm from Enugu State, which is in the southeast region of Nigeria. For years, young Nigerians like myself, with interesting hairstyles, ripped jeans iPhones, nice cars, have been harassed, extorted, illegally detained, tortured, raped, and killed by the Nigerian police, specifically a unit of the Nigerian police called SARS. SARS stands for Special Anti-Robbery Squad, and trust me, they truly are a special bunch, a special breed of armed robbers in uniform, a special group and gang of rapists in a, with a badge, a special crowd of murderers with a license to carry a gun. For as long as I can remember, we begged and petitioned the Nigerian government to put an end to this corrupt unit. And to their credit, they complied or at least it seemed like they complied. First, with the disbandment of SARS in 2016, then again in 2017, 2018, 2019. I know, it's an abusive relationship. 2020, and I know we all won't be forgetting 2020 in a hurry. As the coronavirus ravaged the globe, back home in Nigeria, we were more afraid of another type of virus, SARS. On the 3rd of October, a video surfaced online where SARS officers shot a young man and fled with his Lexus SUV. We were outraged. But this was followed by the gunning down of an up-and-coming Nigerian musician. I'm a musician. Could have been me. At this point, the hashtag end SARS was trending all over the world. And thanks to Nigeria's biggest celebrities and artists, influencers who said, enough is enough, it is time we speak up. And so by the 8th of October, the streets of Nigeria were filled with young men and women protesting police brutality, and I was one of them. But it is the 20th of October, 2020, that has brought me here today. On that very horrible day, the Nigerian army, sanctioned by the Nigerian government, stormed the Leki toll gate. And this is a major roadway in Lagos State, by the way. No warning, no dialogue. Soldiers opened fire on unarmed, peaceful protesters with live ammunition. We cried, we braced, and we started to sing the national anthem, just with the hopes that they recognize we're not their enemy. It made no difference. As I laid on the floor, uh, I remember a young man, he just jumped on top of my body, and he was screaming, cover her, cover her. I couldn't really make sense of what, he was, what the whole thing was about. He was struck by a bullet, on his lower back. I genuinely believe he saved my life, and I don't even know who he is. I don't even know why I didn't run, to be honest. Um, uh, 
at that time, I thought it was the end. And so my instinct at the moment was show everybody what's going on. You know, you're going to die here today. And so I pulled out my phone, went to Instagram, started live broadcasting this madness. Viewers on the live helped us call ambulances, but the soldiers refused the ambulance's entry. And so some of us had to turn into instant surgeons in, a, in an attempt to remove the bullet from the leg of a protester. Eventually, the shooting stopped, and um, we observed that some of the soldiers were picking up their shells, I believe in an attempt to hide evidence of this crime. And so we scampered around to pick the shells that we could find in an attempt to have evidence of this crime. And this was why, while rather, other soldiers were dumping bodies onto their trucks. They left, and we felt a sense of victory, you know? Some can't really explain it. We were happy and angry, relieved but in pain. But unfortunately, after being on Instagram Live for so long, my phone battery died. Because not too long after, another phase of attack was upon us. But this time, it was the Nigerian police. And they came in guns blazing as well. And so we ran. We took the injured to a nearby hospital and um, the others to a church. The church apparently had been on the live and they had offered us refuge. By the next morning, ro soldiers raided the hospital looking for me. And I owe a great deal of gratitude and thanks to a friend and colleague who had called me earlier and said, put off the location on your phone and leave that hospital as soon as possible. And so it was barely 15 minutes after I left. But it didn't end there. My boss and his wife got threatening phone calls. I couldn't go home to where I lived because we got reports of strange men lurking around my apartment complex. I haven't gone home, actually, since the 20th of October, 2020. Speaking of home, um, I'm from a large family of eight. Five boys, three girls, with very opposing characters, I tell you. I'm the last, with a sprinkle of last child crazy. <laughs> but I remember my parents, you know, they, they worked really hard to provide us with basic things, food, education, health care, security, allowances. All while teaching us to love and respect each other's differences. On the other hand, Nigeria is home to over 200 million brothers and sisters with different cultures and tribes and faiths and beliefs. Things and differences that the government has used for the longest time to pit us against each other. But the NSARS movement swept that away, even if it was just for a time being. I witnessed protesters collaborating and helping each other Protesters giving food and water to the same police who's been killing us off every day. Others provided security. Another group provided funds that were donated to them, I mean in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, for legal and medical attention to protesters who needed it. This is the real Nigeria. But the Nigerian government, much like an irresponsible parent, failed to see the opportunity as a learning curve, to listen to the cries of its quote-unquote children. Instead, they chose to deny these events and also moved swiftly to silence us. Starting with the Nigerian Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, and yes, you, you heard me right, the Nigerian Minister of Information, our very own spin doctor. Yeah, his first name is Lai. It's inevitable, right? And the pun is begging, is begging me. Lai called the shooting a fabrication of a massacre without bodies. He said I was a purveyor of fake news with the intent of tarnishing the nation's image that I am a terrorist, amongst other things. 
the Nigerian army called the shooting fake and that I had made the whole thing up with a green screen. Yes, I have plans of uh, heading to Hollywood after this speech. <sighs> you know, 15 people died on the 20th of October and not a single government official, police, or army personnel has been brought to book. 15, at least, all while singing the national anthem. As an artist and a DJ, I listen to music a lot, you know, all the time, and I'm reminded of the legend, the artist, Fela and Nicola Pokuti. He was known for speaking truth to power with his art. And I'm reminded of his 1977 song titled Zombie. Here, Fela likens the Nigerian military to mindless zombies following idiotic orders. It was relevant then, it is relevant today, and it most likely will be relevant tomorrow, in the future. The same future that they say is in the hands of the leaders of tomorrow, but what we have Tomorrow, our recycled leaders of today who have failed to provide an enabling environment for young leaders to thrive and contribute. No, but they chose instead to kill us all off, one by one. This might sound outrageous to you, and you might wonder why, and I'll tell you. Our leaders are afraid. It's as simple as that. They're afraid of a thinking, an innovative, a collaborative, and a working Nigeria. They are afraid of every young Nigerian who, against all odds, have made it for themselves. They are afraid of a me, the coconut head generation, as we like to call ourselves. We are hard-headed, we are not easily deceived by propaganda, and we stand up to our oppressors. And while we may not do this all the time, because uh, wahala no de finish, as we like to say, back home. I think there's a Nigerian in the crowd. <laughs> well, what it means, though, is that the problems never end. And while I understand that we have to take a break to put food on the table, to at least secure our mental health, know this. Corruption, tyranny, abuse of power, do not go on a break. And so today I'm choosing to use my voice and my talent to push for the things that we ought to have. And I want to ask you all, these fine people, to please join me and support my vision for promoting democracy, human rights values and equality through arts. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs>